Hey everybody, thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew. Welcome and glad you are here. On this channel, we like to talk about simple crypto passive income strategies that are implemented on blockchains with utility, use cases, and that solve business problems. If you like that type of content, subscribe here or follow me right down here over at DeFi Divi on Twitter. As always, none of this is investment advice. I am not an investment advisor. Always do your own research outside this channel, outside YouTube, wherever you can. Talk to a financial advisor. Let's get into it. An article came down my feed. I think it was on Twitter. This came down my feed from Watcher.Guru. And we're going to talk about this milestone of uh, XRP surpassing 44.6 million total wallet addresses. I started digging into this because I wanted to find out, are these wallet addresses actually active? How many are active? What's going on? What's happening? Is this thing dead? Is it alive? Is it, is it booming? And I will say at the outset, this thing, the XRP ledger, XRP in and of itself, as far as the network effect, it looks like it is the opposite of dead. It is doing very well. And I found some interesting stuff while perusing the XRP ledger. An interesting metric we'll talk about a little later that shows that maybe something big could be about to happen. No guarantee, but some a really interesting stat. And so we're going to jump into it. But from the outset, this is far from dead. So let's get into this. First, let's get into this metric uh, by Watcher.Guru This on the blog post. I'm sure you've seen this Twitter account if you're on Twitter. If not, give it a follow. Post some pretty interesting news stats. And I quote, XRP surpasses 4.6 million total wallet addresses. Ongoing legal proceedings between Ripple and the SEC have not hindered the acquisition growth of its native token as XRP surpasses 4.6 million total wallet addresses. Crypto data library Masari has reported metrics by showing the addresses currently holding the digital asset. Yeah, and we'll take a look at Masari in a second. There's some cool stuff on there. Uh, and I quote, for the better part of two years, Ripple and the SEC have engaged in a vital legal conflict. Moreover, the recent developments suggest that the ongoing dispute could come to an end fairly soon while the native token reaches the milestone. And if you've been in cryptocurrency for a while, even if you're not an XRP, you've heard of the Ripple SEC lawsuit. And the reason it's so important and so big is because, well, just the fact that it is so big, this will set the precedent for most of the cryptocurrencies out there, whether they will be de deemed securities or commodities, and uh, or in the United States, that is, I should say, because the rest of the world's already kind of determined, it looks like, that these are commodities. And maybe this is, this is part of what's going on with XRP. And while we're, we're going to see, uh, we're, we appear to be seeing growth. So exciting stuff. Uh, yeah, and then the article says something similar right here. And I quote, there may not be a more important court proceeding for the cryptocurrency industry than Ripple versus the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Subsequently, the conflict could determine how digital assets are categorized in the future, specifically stating what justifies the definition of a security or not. Now, amidst all those court proceedings, the Ripple native token XRP has officially surpassed 4.6 million wallet addresses. Moreover, data by Masari has shown that the asset has been acquired by over 38,000 active addresses in just the past 24 hours. That's pretty impressive right there. And I quote, alternatively, XRP is currently sitting at a price of around 38 cents, according to Masari's data specifically sitting in a 24-hour range of 37.9 and cents and maintaining a market cap of 19.45 billion. Conversely, those prices could be affected by the looming legal ruling of the Ripple case. The increased addresses, the increased address acquisition of XRP could be related to optimism regarding the case as the SEC has recently ordered to unveil the Hinman speech documents. A ruling could be in play in the next month. Conclusively, Acquiring the crypto could be a good investment as we enter into a crucial march for the token. Okay, so yeah, so so the uh, Watcher.Guru here is saying that the this increased uh, these increased addresses could be a result of optimism regarding the case, and that could be possible. Yeah, so I started to look into some of the uh, data here. 
One place I went to was the XRP rich list because I wanted to see how many of these wallets are actually have a substantial XRP balance. And so this is not too, this is kind of what I expected. If you look here, you have about 3.5 million wallet addresses that have less than 500 XRP. I think some of these people think XRP is going to $10,000. <laughs> Sorry, I, know, I hope you're right, but I don't think it's going that high. But, uh, and then, so yeah, we can see that 3.5 million of the 4.6 million have a pretty low balance. There's a number of reasons why there can be such a great number of accounts with such a low balance. Uh, what It's actually impressive here that almost 2.5 million of them have between 20 and 500. I do like that versus the majority being between zero and 20. But still, there's a lot of reasons for this. I, I know when I first bought XRP, I uh, don't think I moved it to self-custody for probably... Uh, it might have been a few months, but I did activate the ledger and then I just didn't get around to it. So right there, that would be an account that shows a zero balance for a while uh, or a low balance. Maybe I sent a couple over, but I, yeah, just there's all kinds of reasons why you have these these very low balance wallets. And yeah, the majority of these are still low balance, but we're going to get into some other interesting stuff which suggests real growth which makes me happy, not just wallet address increases, but something that would be ind indicative of Metcalf's law, the network effect, which could in some times, in some cases, affect the price. In the long term, it probably will, because that is one metric some firms use to value a digital asset. You hear the network effect Metcalf's law uh, referred to often by Rao Paul. It was used way before crypto. This is how companies like uh, Facebook and Twitter some people use this to evaluate them based, you know, based on your the number of active users and the number of actual transactions happening on the network. If you're talking about the digital asset space, a transaction is sending a token back and forth. Could be a smart contract or it could be just a you know user to user transaction. If you're talking about applying the network effect on something on a network that is not digital asset based transaction could be uh, the sending of an email or the sending of a message or the posting of a video on Twitter or the posting of a video on Facebook. So basically network activity and the growth of users. So yeah, let's get into that. Let's take a look at XRP scan really quickly because I came across some interesting stats in addition to the wallet address thing posted by Watcher Guru. Uh, this one I really liked here. If you take a look at transactions in the last three months or even the last six months or even the last year, I love how these things are really holding steady. Like, you know, you're, 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 they really hold steady between 1 million and 1.5 million transactions. This is per day. That's a, that's a good number of transactions per day. So stuff is going on on the XRP ledger, regardless of what's happening with the SEC versus Ripple. Because companies are building on this thing. Not only has Ripple built its payments product on the XRP ledger, and it's gaining adoption through the financial industry, but you have other products growing and being built on here now. NFTs are now being built on the XRP ledger. There's many applications. The ecosystem is growing. But what? let's take a look at this. So let's scan back down to three months here. And now look at us. We are still hey, hanging out about a little over a million transactions per day. What is happening here? Boom. 3.1 million transactions since, since the end of February. It started on February 28th. We're at March 2nd. So in the last two days, transactions are blowing up. I mean, they've doubled. No, they've tripled. Transactions have essentially tripled right now. And when you look historically... Because this isn't the first time we've had a spike in transactions. When you take a look at this historically, like let's say we go back to, let's take a look at all time. And you can see we had, here's the transaction spike we just looked at. Here is a transaction spike we've had 
back in November of 2021. Here's another one we had back in um, November 28th of 2019. Here is some nice transaction growth right here. I love this one because we have a trend, a little trend here. If you look at this one specifically, this was from, you know, let's say late 2020, all the way basically until the time the SEC lawsuit was announced. Uh, you have... If you go ahead and you look, you look at, let's start from October in 2020, and you look at this on coin market cap to a nice price movement all the way from 25 cents up to about $1.36. I think I remember seeing this thing cross over $2. And I remember this time well. I remember I was driving in my car and I saw the price cross over $2. I think it was right around May 1st. It just, it wicked up. I was checking the price while I was driving. Don't do that. But, you know, it's digital assets. You get excited. And I was just refreshing while I was stuck in traffic. And I did see it hit over $2. And then, boom, that was it. All, all over. But then we came back up. But the fact that this transaction volume is increasing when these happen, it suggests it's possible that if this continues it could affect the price. And that goes back to, that could go back to using something like Metcalf's law or the network effect for evaluation. You know, more wallet addresses and more network usage, more transactions increases the value of a coin. And there are various formulas out there used to calculate that. And that would be probably a series of videos. So maybe I'll get into that one day and start deep diving into different ways because you would use Metcalf's law and the formula might change based on which, um, which blockchain or distributed ledger technology you are doing this for because there are different variables for each chain. But I thought that was really interesting. And so this suggests to me there could be something big very soon coming, possibly in terms of price, not financial advice. I'm not saying do anything. I'm not buying any more XRP. I stopped buying it uh, over a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, I loaded up my bags. They were pretty loaded when the SEC lawsuit hit. When it hit, I did not sell one. And I just thought, you know what? This is a good time. I'm really happy with my XRP bags. This is a great time to start diversifying. This is a reminder that I might be a little overweighted in XRP. Definitely not dumping it for something else. I'm not even dumping a portion of it for something else. And I didn't. I just started acquiring other things. You know, back then, I think I was mostly in Bitcoin and XRP. And I maybe I had a couple other. I think I had some VeChain at the time. Yeah, so that was for me. I'm not buying any more. I'm happy with those bags, but I, I, I could see, we could see something coming big, coming soon, especially we have things like now we have XLS 30, which is, uh, it, it, which is a proposal on the docket, if you will. And we have XLS 38, which is a proposal on the docket. So XLS 30, if you don't know, is bringing an automated market maker to the XRP ledger. So now you, me, if we want to deploy capital uh, to a liquidity pool, we can earn uh, part of those transaction fees, decentralized finance for providing the liquidity for others to trade on the XRP ledger. Who knows what we'd be providing liquidity for in this context? We might be part of the cross-border remittance solution as well by providing our liquidity to the XRP ledger through this automated market maker if this one passes. And then there's another proposal on the docket, XLS38, cross-chain bridging. Now uh, XRP is getting into the pros they're, they're thinking about getting into the cross-chain bridging game which is good. There's, you know, it's a whole world of interoperability and it's just something that has to happen. So I'm going to, I'll probably do some content related to this as well. Right now, my favorite all-time interoperability solution, hands down, is Flare Network. Uh, but it will be interesting to see what XRP has in mind. Uh, so yeah, looking, looking forward to doing more deep dives into that as well. But yeah, transaction volume is blowing up in addition to the number of wallet addresses. So that is network activity. If you use something like Metcalf's Law or the network effect, it's also known as, that tells you a higher valuation could be on the horizon very soon. Exciting stuff. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think? Price about to explode? Are we about to have a spike finally? Because I know many of us have been waiting for a while. I'd be super excited. A lot of my XRP is just long-term keeper stuff. 
but I cannot wait to put some of it to work in DeFi. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think? Are you going to keep it at $10 and put it to work in DeFi? Are you going to hold it till it's $10,000? I don't think it's going to happen, but I hope it does for you $10,000 per XRP peeps. Okay, I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope this video finds you well, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.